Welcome back for part five of this Getting Started series. Uh, this time we're going to take a look at timesheets. Now there's a couple of components you need to already have set up for timesheets to work. Number one, you need to have your team that are going to be timesheeting part of your system. They need to have accepted their invite and you can see Miss Apprentice here has accepted uh, their invite and uh, as talked about previously, I gave them a role of basic. So that's one component. Second to that, what you want to have set up is labor rates for that particular staff member. So that's what they cost you to run per hour, what, what uh, you charge them out at per hour. Whether or not it's a quoted piece of work, that'll help you um, work out your profit margin at a later date. So I'm going to go add here, just on the labor area, add. Then I'm going to type in Miss Apprentice. You can call it whatever you'd like, could just be Apprentice or Foreman, whatever. I'm going to give it a cost price, which is what I pay Miss Apprentice per hour plus overheads, and then I'm going to have um, you know her charged out at 65 per hour. And finally, I'm going to assign this to Miss Apprentice. Now, this step here of assigning to the staff member, they have to have accepted their invite into the system before you can do that. Not critical, but it saves a step for them later on. So once I've saved that, I now have a labor rate for Miss Apprentice. The only other component you really need set up is a job. So new house build, for example. Now I'm just going to pause my screen and log into Miss Apprentice's account, and then you can check out how her view looks. Now you'll instantly see that there's a lot less options on the left-hand side for Miss Apprentice. Um, all of the options to quote or do invoices or any of the admins been reduced, and uh, naturally they've got the jobs and timesheets, which are the main components that Ms. Apprentice is going to use. Um, I've set my account up so they always land on the timesheet screen. And whether on your desktop or your mobile, this kind of screen looks the same. Now from here, what they want to do is obviously choose the day they're working on and click on plus. Go to select job. I'm going to grab new house build. And then it's going to take me straight to entering either the duration or the time range. So I'm going to say 8 a.m. through to 1.15 p.m. That'll calculate the hours. And here is where they can add details of their entry. So here are my details. And then simply hit save. Now, if, that was, uh, if those steps were done on mobile, it's actually going to capture the GPS location of the staff member at the same time, which is pretty handy for your records. I'm now going to log into the other screen so you can see how that's recorded against the job. So now that we're back in the main system, if I want to check out what Miss Apprentice has done, I can go to timesheets here and I can actually select her timesheets to see a total hours. Now on the job screen, you will see an unbilled amount and this amount has come from her labor rate. So it's automatically calculated what the amount should be. And if I go into the job, into the area called charges, this is going to show her 5.25 hours with a buy of 35 and a sell of 65. So there's that total amount there that's due to be billed for this job. And uh, that's timesheets. See you soon. Cheers.